Well, the New Yorker wanted me to write a piece about going back to Libya, and uh, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do that because I stopped writing when I got back for about three months. I mean, I didn't write even a letter, nothing, right? So it was quite a, a serious proposition that maybe my writing life is over. Um, and then I picked out the first two lines from the notebook which are still the first two lines of the book, which are just, they just state where I am, the date, and who I am with. That's it. And then I thought, what might the next sentence be? So it's a space where you have fidelity to the facts, but also a space where you try to create room for the imagination to inhabit those details. My father was a very active leading member of the Libyan uh, dissident movement. He wanted a Libya that couldn't have been more different from the reality. It, you cannot have chosen a vision that was more different from the reality. And so, so there was a collision uh, between those two. Two and a half years into this, lie, uh, we got a letter that was written in my father's hand from Abu Slim prison, which is a notorious political prison in Libya and Tripoli, uh, nicknamed the last stop. That's the place that they send you when they want to forget about you. And it, it detailed exactly what happened, which was that in 24 hours from being taken from his home by the Egyptians, he was on a plane to Tripoli. But also the letter is extraordinary, and I quote from it in the book. It's it's an extraordinary document because it has in it everything. It has in it all of him, you know, his consciousness, his humor, his wit, his despair, you know, oh, it's all there. Well, that was the day that the authorities uh, uh, executed 1,270 political prisoners in the same day rounded them up and, and shot them in the courtyard of the, of the prison. Uh, and it was always a possibility that my father was amongst them. And at that time, I had uh, written in my book, so the same morning that those men were rounded up, I had written in my diary a very short entry. And it goes something like this. Um, couldn't get up till noon. Um, never speak about money troubles again. I think I will go back to NG, National Gallery. I think I'm done with the Velasquez. I might switch to uh, Maximilian. If you wanted to choose a painting in the National Gallery, if you walked in now, you and I walked into the National Gallery and thought, let's find the one painting that would best reflect the reality of the Abu Slim massacre, the unknowability of, of how many people, the names of the, we know how many, but the names of the people, their identities, still a lot of, a lot of missing, missing pieces. Uh, we would probably choose the execution of Maximilian uh, by Manet, because that painting is a painting of a political execution, but also it's a painting that after Manet, when he was, after he died, it was cut up and people sold it in pieces to make more money um, from it. And then eventually Degas put it all together, but he couldn't find a couple of the pieces. But from my experience, returning is very, um, it's a very uncertain, much more active uh, enterprise that has questioned it's led me to question whether it's possible to return to anything. The light is exceptional. I always thought it's exceptional and I somehow put it to one. I always thought that every sea, uh, no matter how beautiful, is an imposter. 
Uh, the authentic sea is the Mediterranean of my childhood. That is the, the real sea. Um, and um, and so, so I resisted those things. But when I was there, you know, the light is exceptional. It has a physical um, manifestation. It's almost like an object. You know, when you walk from the shade into the light, it's as if you've entered an object, a physical object. I grew up with a very vivid sense of how corrosive and damaging Italian colonialism has been in Libya. Not just when Mussolini came into power and Graziani and all these people, but before even um, what Italy did in Tripoli between 1911 to 1915, which I write about in the book. Um, the, the kind of strange indifference that Italians have to that history, many Italians have to that history, um, is wounding, you know, on some level. If you are at all interested in a genuine engagement with the present, if you're at all interested about what it means to be a human being in the present, and you happen to be either Libyan or Italian, then it's inescapable for you but to engage with this history. Italy saw Libya as an extension of its southern territories. So you push uh, some of your southern um, population, who are often poor peasants, and you give them land in this new place. Uh, and you ethnically cleanse the country of its Arabic population. Um, and that policy kill 45% of the Cyrenaican population to subdue it. It killed more than that of the livestock population in a country where that's the main livelihood, you know. Literature will make a fool of you if you use it for something. My, in my work, my my um, allegiance and commitment uh, is to my work to be as free as possible. I don't burden it with any um, obligations. This might seem odd because given how much I've written about Libya, you might think, well, no, this is somebody who's committed and who's working from a point of view of obligation. Never, never. Obligation is the worst way to make art.